morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, the trial for an ex-constable accused of fabricating security payment logs for Rodriguez Park enters its seventh day. And Mikhail Gorbachev, who set out to revitalize the Soviet Union but ended up unleashing forces that led to the collapse of communism, has passed away at the age of 91. Outside with live cam, some of us saw no rain yesterday, others way too much. And a flood watch is in effect for part of our area this morning. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, August 31st. Thanks for joining us this morning. I didn't get rain, but I got the overcast. What about you? Same here yesterday. I watched storms get close, move away. Get close, move away. Justin's in for Mike now, and there was no rhyme or reason yesterday. It was just, and what did happen was absolutely monsoonal, torrential. In some spots, and wait till I show you the rainfall map later, you'll see the, the hole that was right over San Antonio, but you're right, some places got too much rain overnight. We have a flood watch in effect for parts of the area. That's the western part, and as we look at the, the radar right now, we've still got more showers and storms out west, places that really, honestly, at this point, don't need much more, and you can see some of the, the thunderstorms that are developing there. Here around San Antonio, not much. We've had a couple of showers work through. Nothing that's uh, terribly heavy. And we'll see some more isolated showers and storms pop up later today. But it's the west that we'll be watching this morning. Uvalde, Crystal City over to Eagle Pass. Those are areas that could see some flooding here for the next several hours. And uh, we'll be watching that closely. There's the flood watch. It goes through 7 a.m. tomorrow. Basically, it's Bandera, Uvalde, La Prior, Carrizo Springs, and points west. That is underneath that flood watch. Our forecast today, 20% chance of rain this morning here in town. And then by noontime, we're at 85, 20% chance of rain this afternoon. We're up into the low 90s. We'll bump it up to a 30% chance. It'll be those hit or miss type showers. Some places could get a dose of heavy rain depending on where those showers and storms set up. More on that. We'll take a look at the rainfall totals, as I said, and we'll look ahead to the weekend, which has some higher rain chances. That's coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Justin. The legal team for Michelle Barrientes Vela pushed for a mistrial six days into testimony. Now, in this case, the ex-constable is accused of fabricating security payment logs for Rodriguez Park. A Texas Ranger investigating the case went beyond that scope during his testimony yesterday. At one point, he said he believed the ex-constable committed official oppression something Barrientes Vela wasn't charged with in this trial. Now, that was a comment Barrientes Vela's team reacted to. This is ridiculous. I mean, we were clear about this. We had hearings outside the jury's presence multiple times. She's asking a question about what offense is, and then he bites for it. They knew it. They knew they were going to do this. There's no other explanation. These are not stupid people. They knew exactly what was going on. You were more than fair and more than clear of your admonishments not to talk about anything outside the motion and limiting. Clear. Judge Velia Mesa denied the motion for mistrial, but she ordered the Texas Ranger to attend another hearing to demonstrate why he was not in contempt of court. The prosecution is nearing the end of its case. Defense attorneys for Barrientes Vela have not indicated if they plan to call witnesses. An update on that $50 million in extra revenue CPS Energy paid to the city of San Antonio. Several council members appear to be backing away from giving customers that one-time $29 credit on their October bill. Instead, some council members are talking about using the money for weatherization. Mayor Ron Nierberg is backing a rebate, but is open to other options as long as the plan is effective to go with it. Next week, folks, this vote is now being delayed to allow council members to continue their discussions. In your morning headlines, extreme heat is tightening its grip on tens of millions of Americans on both the West and East Coast. Los Angeles is bracing for its worst heat wave of the year with an excessive heat watch issued this morning. Temperatures in parts of California are expected to hit 115 degrees. Officials are also on alert for brush fires in Philadelphia. Hot and humid weather is forcing 100 schools to close early again today as they did yesterday with temperatures hitting the mid-90s. Several schools in Baltimore are also doing the same. Many schools are closing due to lack of air conditioning. This morning, U.S. Customs and Border Protection says it has seized almost $12 million worth of cocaine from a truck that was supposed to be carrying only baby wipes. It happened at the Columbia Solidarity Bridge that connects Texas and the Mexican state of Nuevo Laredo over the Rio Grande. Officers initially sent the trailer truck for a second inspection. Then officials say a canine and a non-intrusive inspection turned up nearly 2,000 packages containing roughly 1,500 pounds of cocaine. Now to the death of Mikhail Gorbachev, the final leader of the Soviet Union, the man who ended the Cold War and lifted the Iron Curtain. 
but his legacy is a complicated one. ABC's Rihanna Nally has more. This morning, people around the world are remembering Mikhail Gorbachev, a man who played a complicated and unique role in history. Gorbachev sought more peaceful relations with the West when he was named president of the Soviet Union in 1985. The birthmark on his head made him instantly recognizable, and he quickly gained star power in America. I just dropped by with present for warming of house. Instead, find you grappling with local off. Oh, brought some of your commie friends to help you fight dirty, eh? Then President Reagan addressing Gorbachev in his famous speech at the Berlin Wall. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Gorbachev would later say Moscow was not impressed at the former actor's iconic moment. Not at all. <laughs> and I said, you know, we were very well aware that the president had another profession as an actor. Gorbachev ended the Cold War without bloodshed before resigning in 1991, but he failed to prevent the collapse of the Soviet Union, which fractured into 15 territories. During an interview with Larry King, Gorbachev said this about how he wanted to be remembered. History is a capricious lady, but I, I hope that it will uh, judge me fairly. Gorbachev reportedly died after a long illness. He was 91 years old. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. 436, 77 degrees. And still ahead, the steps students and parents need to take if you're trying to graduate from college debt free. And we're taking a look at some of the cuts made by the Dallas Cowboys and Houston Texans, plus a big matchup this Friday for the Jets and Rockets. Quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking out at Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road. Very quiet this morning, but things are moving. I don't know about you, but I'm a little paranoid right now about going without an umbrella. Justin will tell me if I'm justified in my paranoia or not coming up. I think you should get it. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have released both Cooper Rush and Will Greer. That leaves Dak Prescott as the only quarterback on the team at this point. It's after the Cowboys order to release backup quarterback Ben DiNucci. What was interesting, the Cowboys did not place Michael Gallup on the pup list. That means they expect him back before the fourth game of the season, if not sooner. Houston Texans released quarterback Jeff Driscoll yesterday after he fell behind former Commanders and Aggies quarterback Kyle Allen. He was a part of the Texans' cuts to get down to 53 men. It's after he signed a one-year deal to be with Houston, even though he can be brought back on the practice squad. By the way, former Aggies quarterback Kellen Mond was, as expected, cut by the Minnesota Vikings. When UTSA kicks off their 2022 season this Saturday at the Dome, the Roadrunners are encouraging fans to get their seats a little early so that's uh, so they can see the unveiling of the Conference USA Championship banner and the rafters of the Alamo Dome. Awesome. Roadrunners are coming off their best football season in school history with their 12-win season. They begin defense of the title against the University of Houston. We have a saying that, you know, it doesn't matter who we're playing and we're always trying to prepare the best we can and focus on us and getting, getting ready to play. But obviously game week, there's a little bit more of that energy you feel that, uh, you know, amongst the team. But, you know, we're excited. We're excited. We're flying around making plays and we're just getting better each and every day um, leading up to the game. I feel like everybody was juiced up. I feel like I hate saying it, but just it was from everybody it was just a little bit different because I feel like everybody was more locked in compared to like a regular past week in, our, in fall camp. We're pretty locked into our fall camp, but just a game week, just it's, it's a little different. And remember, guys, it's supposed to be fun, too. Kickoff at the Alabama Dome is Saturday set for 2.30. One of the big games in our big game coverage this Friday night will be the Judson Rockets hosting Westlake Chaparrales out of Austin. Rockets coming out their season opening overtime victory against Johnson at the Case Hat Pigskin Classic in the Alamo Dome. Now the team is looking forward to hosting one of the premier teams in the state this coming Friday night. It's after Westlake defeated Ridge Point in their season opener. I know they're real good in the box. The O-line and D-line is real, real makes that team. So our O-line and D-line got to step up in. The skills got to make plays when the plays are needed to be made. We know they're a great team. They, Everybody knows who they are. We're the underdogs, most definitely. But like Coach told us today, we worry about ourselves and we'll get the job done. Kickoff between Judson and Austin Westlake at Rutledge Stadium will be 7 o'clock 
this Friday night. And that's a look at morning sports. You can see the rain there in that video. I know, right? <laughs> Time now, 442 and 77 degrees for now. We'll still ahead a look at some of the best ways for students to graduate from college with little to no debt. And next, it's every parent's worst nightmare, trying to pick up your child from school to find out your child is not there. That How that happened to a mom in North Carolina. In this morning's GMA First Look, every parent's worst nightmare. You go to pick up your kid after their first day of school and you find out your child isn't there. One North Carolina mom says it happened to her. Immediately, I'm like, why was she put on the bus? Oh, because he was a bus rider. No, I've never signed him up to be a bus rider. Her son Avery was back home locked out. His mom wouldn't find out his location for another two hours. The principal assured me, OK, because he's six, he's not allowed to get off the bus. So I'm like, OK, the bus driver originally said, oh, there's no kids on the bus. They like, well, maybe he fell asleep. The bus driver said, no, I dropped that kid off. And coming up at 7 a.m., details on where the six year old turned up safely and the new technology some districts are implementing to prevent this from happening. With your GMA First Look, I'm Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. For so many college students, uh, going to college means borrowing money. 65% of college students graduate with debt, and the average is more than $30,000. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris looks at strategies to help families minimize student loans and even graduate debt-free. Joshua Mata is studying to be an architect without building a tower of debt. The whole tuition for three years. He's starting at San Antonio College in the Alamo Promise Program. Smart move, according to Christina Ellis, who literally wrote the book on how to graduate debt free. Don't buy into this myth that you need to spend a ton of money that you don't have to go to a fancy school. First tip, choose a school you can afford. Look beyond the sticker price, research which schools are more generous with financial aid, or start at community college, then transfer. A lot of states, a lot of cities and towns have free or very low cost community college, and it's a great place to start. Next, fill out the FAFSA early. That's the free application for federal student aid. A lot of people who think that they don't qualify for financial aid actually are surprised whenever they do get a little bit of award. If you don't qualify for funds, you may qualify for work study. Next, scholarships. My senior year of high school, I basically treated it like a part-time job. Ellis got a half million dollars in scholarships. She recommends using online databases like Scholarship Owl and My Scholarly. But the best place to start, she says, your high school counselor. They're going to coordinate a lot of the local scholarships, and those are awesome because they typically have less competition. If you're working, take advantage of employer tuition assistance programs. Those can help with undergrad and graduate degrees and parents set up a college savings plan like a 529 the earlier the better even if you don't have a ton of money to save that little bit can add up Marilyn Moritz KSAT 12 news and another quick look at the roads with trans guide no rain in this shot right now at loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road things are moving there I didn't see wet roads, so I got closer to downtown this morning. Justin joined us now. Justin, those rainfall totals are kind of like a student driver. They are all over the road. <laughs> yeah, well done. Uh, you're right about that. And yesterday, San Antonio, I know we didn't get a lot here. The, the airport reported nothing. You can kind of see the hole right over San Antonio here. But all around us, good numbers. Sometimes that's just how it goes. You're probably thinking, well, what, what's with that? Is there some sort of dome over San Antonio? Is there a reason for that? There's not. It's just pure luck. Sometimes that's just the way it works out. But places in western Bandera County picked up over seven inches. That's through this morning. That's caused a little bit of flooding there. Places in Lakey, uh, near Lakey, Camp Wood, 6.45, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, places that desperately needed some rain, got some yesterday, and now there's more falling. Here around San Antonio, though, again, not much. Places like Converse did pick up some rain, 2.24, 2.24. Four two, I should say there. That was a good number. Adkins, Lytle, Castroville, a little bit in Bernie. Just not much for San Antonio Metro. We have some more opportunities, though, coming up, as we always say. And there's chances all the way through the seven-day. Let's look at the live radar right now. So we're starting to see more showers and storms develop across our western counties. This is where we have that flood watch, and I'll show you that just in just a second. But it is a cause for concern because we're starting to get some pockets of pretty heavy rain here between Creosote Springs, Crystal City, and Eagle Pass. You notice a few lightning strikes there, too. 
You're going to get very good rainfall rates with this. So this is going to cause some minor street flooding. Right now, it's mainly over rural areas. We've also seen a pretty heavy storm come right through the city of Uvalde. Uh, that's putting down some lightning strikes and some heavy rain may cause some street flooding there. And then uh, other isolated to scattered showers and storms beginning to develop. Now here around Bear County, there's not much. We had one little shower work through downtown. And we notice a few more working through the northwest side of Bear County, but expect this kind of activity here for the next couple of hours, these pop up showers and pop up downpours. It could affect the morning commute if we get a few more to develop. And here is the setup. Uh, you see the rain starting to really pick up here across our western counties. That's where that flood watch goes through tomorrow morning. And it's basically uh, west of San Antonio is where that concern sits at the moment. And that's because we have an upper level low that's spinning here over West Texas that is starting to move away. As it does, our rain chances come down a little bit here in San Antonio. 77 right now, cloudy. Dew point is at 74. It's humid, of course. Uh, 73 Kerrville, 72 in Rock Springs. A lot of places in the upper 70s right now. Dew points in the mid 70s. And that does not really change that much. So for today, we're going to keep in a 30% chance of rain. It'll be that hit or miss pop up shower storm, but anything it does develop could put down some good rain. As we get into this evening, same story tomorrow morning shows some showers and storms developing and then by tomorrow afternoon, 30% chance. We're just going to keep that going across the board. Your case at 12 hour forecast 77 at 8 o'clock. 20% chance of rain at 11 a.m., 20% chance at noontime, 85. And then we're up into the low 90s today for highs with that 30% chance of isolated shower or storm. 30% chance today, tomorrow, Friday. We start to bring rain chances up, though, Saturday, Sunday, and even into Labor Day. We're expecting more coverage of rain. There could be some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there, too. So, yes, it wasn't great yesterday, but we do have more opportunities here. August has been a, a great change of pace and uh, great to see rain chances across the board. We're happy with that. Me too. Thank you, Justin. Yep. We'll try to keep the rain train going. Thank yep. you, Justin. Right now, 452, 77 degrees. And the running of the T-Rexes returns. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and a guy paddling a pumpkin hopes to squash the world record. Those stories are next. For the first time since 2019, a hysterical display of inflatable dinosaur athletics returns to a racetrack in Washington. Seen as Jeremy Roth has today's take a look at this. It's the running of the Rexes. This fan favorite showcase of athletic prehistoric hysterics returned to the Emerald Downs racetrack in Washington for the first time in three years. And this year, it was bigger than ever before. More than 150 runners donned inflatable T-Rex costumes, and after a prancing predatory parade, they were off in one big calamitous carnivorous cluster of trotting tyrannosaurs, drag race and dinos, a gallop and gaggle of not so distinct but definitely extinct rip roaring Rexes that were gone in a blink. Okay, I'm fresh out of clever phrases. In the end, only one champ could be named in both the adult and kid runner categories, but let's face it, the spectators were the real winners here. Well, it wasn't a race, but cleanup crews had to play catch up on this California highway after an accident sent a truck into the median on I-80, leaving its load of more than 150,000 tomatoes scattered and splattered across the roadway. Thankfully, the reported injuries involved weren't major, but the mess was, and it took authorities most of the day to mop it up. And speaking of fruits of labor, good gourd, that is one big pumpkin. It weighs 846 pounds and its name is Berta. And Dwayne Hansen of Nebraska spent his 60th birthday in it, paddling 38 miles down the Missouri River. It was an 11 hour pumpkin spiced pilgrimage Hansen is hoping will help him squash a world record. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. I'm not sure how you didn't capsize that because you see what he's sitting on. Yes. Just a plastic cooler. It looks like a, yeah, like a little ice I mean, chest. He's this close from water getting inside, but it wound up being an 11 hour journey. I think that was a strong core workout. Probably. Probably so. <laughs> 450. Yeah, 457, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA as parents and students visit Uvalde schools for meet the teacher night. Why some safety and security changes will not be ready by the time school starts next week. Plus how you can get more free TV channels and other services. Thanks to Samsung. And another quick look at the roads with Trans Sky looking out there at Loop 410 at Fredericksburg Road. A few more vehicles on the roadway now. We're going to be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break.
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington, tracking the latest in the Mar-a-Lago fallout. Former President Trump now requesting a third party review those FBI seized documents. The Department of Justice now fighting back in a response filed overnight. What they are alleging coming up. And taking a look outside with a live cam. Very humid this morning. Some people got a lot of rain yesterday and some people not so much. Good morning to you and we say goodbye to August. It is Wednesday, August 31st. Thanks for joining us. August hasn't been too bad as far as the temperatures. And we've had some rain. That's the good thing. You were talking about that huge pattern shift this month and it continues today, doesn't it, Justin? Uh, it does. We'll have more opportunities for rain. It really is incredible that we went from basically, uh, you know, desert to now back to our Gulf of Mexico type weather where we get the moisture coming in and we get showers and storms. But that's just the way it goes around here. And as we look at the live radar, we've got some showers and storms out there. The bulk of it west of San Antonio, and that's where we're going to be concerned about some heavy rain this morning. There is a flood watch in effect for these areas, not San Antonio, but areas west of town where we're already starting to pick up some more heavy rain. Uh, lightning strikes pretty common with this activity as it shifts slowly north. So Eagle Pass, uh, towards La Prior, Uvalde, Concan, Lake Erie. Areas that got heavy rain yesterday, so that's why there is a concern here with these uh, showers and storms. A little closer look here at San Antonio. We have a couple of showers up here along I-10 on the far northwest side. Otherwise, it's really pretty quiet. We should see some more pop up, though, throughout the morning and into the afternoon. We're going to put it at about a 30% chance today. If you do get caught underneath one of these downpours, there will be some good rain with it. You just have to be lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. In the meantime, there is the heavy rain that we've been talking about out towards Eagle Pass, uh, moving into Maverick County and uh, working its way north towards Brackettville eventually, where some more rain is expected there this morning. We'll keep an eye on the, those places because, again, flood watch is in effect. This goes through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning where we could see some heavy rain producing some localized flooding. Case that 12 hour forecast. We'll go with a 20% chance of rain this morning, 20% chance through noon 85. We make it up to about 91 this afternoon, 30% chance. It will feel warmer than that, obviously, with a lot of humidity in place. Wonder how the morning commute's looking. Steven's joining us here this morning. Good morning to you, sir. How is everything going this morning? Well, you know, Justin, we put the trans got on rotator there, 35 at New Braunfels. Uh, roads look dry in some spots, but we know that there were some damp roads out there a little bit earlier this morning. I definitely encountered a little bit of a wet commute traveling down I-10. But right now, what we're looking at, 410 at Crossroads, doesn't look bad. In fact, there's really nothing to report at this hour. So if your travels are going to take you right here, no delays. And let's just go ahead and check that out because still a 28 minute drive time if you're driving in those northbound lanes from Pleasanton, 30 minutes on Highway 90 in the eastbound lanes from Castorville and that arrival from Lytle should look about like 16 minutes in the northbound lanes of I-35. So really, again, as I mentioned, nothing to show at this point. It's still very early on. It's US-90 at Couples. Pretty busy out there, but that's expected. We're going to continue to watch the roads closely and have more updates throughout the morning. Mark Suff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio Fire Department responding to a fire at a home on the city's west side. We are learning the fire caused at least $10,000 in damages. Our Jonathan Goto joins us live from the scene. Good morning, Jonathan. And do we know if anyone was hurt? Good morning, Stephanie. And fortunately, no injuries were reported during this fire, and that's because nobody lived inside of this house. We can take a look at what that scene looked like. San Antonio Fire Department working the scene. We know they responded to the 700 block of South San Agustin. This is near South General McMullen, not too far from Highway 90, just minutes after 1 o'clock. You can see them again responding to this home that was vacant. And although the cause of the fire is under investigation, we are learning the fire started in an external shed where the fire spread to the eaves and the underhangs of the main structure that you see there on your screen. Now back out live, it's important to mention that, that nobody lived inside of this home. No injuries were reported. And as you mentioned, the fire officials are telling us there was at least $10,000 worth in damage. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And 504 in just less than a week, students in Uvalde will be heading back to the classroom for the first time since their last school year ended in tragedy. For months, we have heard parents calling for safety and security changes. That work has started, but as Lee Waldman shows us, it will not be ready in time. It's a taste of what next week will hold. Math. You want to learn math? Is that one of your favorite subjects? Math, yeah. Parents and their students walking in and out.
Baldy Elementary for Meet the Teacher Night. A little more nervous than normal, but um, he's got a good teacher. Lucas Potter is going into third grade. He was at Rob on May 24th. His mom, Angela, says she'll have some fear sending him and his brother back next Tuesday. You don't think it can happen to you, and then all of a sudden it does. The campus is partially enclosed by eight foot tall, non scalable perimeter fencing. Right now, there's still a few holes that need to be filled. It's the same here at Dalton Elementary. But at Morales Junior High, no new fencing in sight. I went to Morales yesterday and they didn't have anything improved over there that I saw. This morning we made him virtual. According to the district's website, fencing work is started on three of the eight campuses. Uvalde High School will be measured and a timeline made for when their fencing will be put up. I trust this fence. It's a school board I don't trust. Meanwhile, the work on the secured vestibules at each campus is running significantly behind, according to Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell. Only started at Uvalde Elementary, UDLA, and UHS. We'll have a DPS officer assigned at each entry point when school begins. The district bought 500 security cameras. They're fully installed at UHS and started at Morales. Nowhere else, though. Again, uh, work won't be com totally complete by Tuesday. However, we will continue this work until it is complete. With school around the corner, there's some optimism about the work that's been done. Hopefully he can feel a little more safer. And plenty of skepticism. If I have to pull him, I will. And right now, only thing I see here is a fence. UCISD shared that 136 students have enrolled in their virtual academy. The application process closes today. We're still waiting on transfer numbers from this school year, but looking at UCISD's transfer data from the Texas Education Agency's website for the 2021-2022 school year, there were 416 total transfers out of the district. Back to you. Thank you, Lee. And we are trying to learn more about the response to the shooting at Robb Elementary. Case at 12 has joined other media outlets to obtain records from the city of Uvalde, the Uvalde County Sheriff's Office, and Uvalde CISD. So this is in addition to another lawsuit against the Texas Department of Public Safety. And GMSA will be live in Uvalde next Tuesday for their first day of school. Well, this morning, more on that FBI search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence. The Justice Department is now alleging it found evidence of obstruction in its probe into the alleged mishandling of classified documents recovered from Trump's home. ABC's Justin Finch has more on how President Biden is responding. This morning, the Justice Department issuing a scathing rebuke of former President Trump's legal team, urging a judge to reject a request for a special master to review the seized records. The landmark filing details repeated efforts by the government to obtain those records and includes this image, which justice officials say shows top secret records seen here alongside a box of framed photos. The DOJ alleging its discovered efforts to obstruct its investigation into those FBI seized documents, saying government records were likely concealed and removed from a Mar-a-Lago storage room. Also noting the FBI found three classified documents outside of boxes and in desks in a room called the 45 office. Records DOJ explains it had been working with Trump's team for months to recover, even issuing subpoenas. That Mar-a-Lago probe reverberating on the November midterm campaign trail Tuesday. Now it's sickening to see the new attacks on the FBI. President Biden in Pennsylvania condemning, quote, MAGA Republicans for the ramped up rhetoric and threats following the FBI search of Trump's home. There's no place in this country, no place for endangering the lives of law enforcement. I'm also opposed to defunding the FBI. A Florida federal judge is set to hear arguments regarding Trump's special master request on Thursday and has indicated preliminary support for granting it. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, fewer animals are leaving animal care services in San Antonio, and that means more animals could be euthanized. Until now, ACS has been able to adopt, transfer, or return these animals 90 percent of the time. Now, that rate has now dropped to 88 percent. ACS told City Council the economy is partly to blame. Since more people are being evicted, those people are having to surrender the pets they may have. ACS says they are also dealing with staffing shortages and they're working on a strategic plan to rethink the way it does business.
Details of the plan will be released to the council in the fall. 510, 77 degrees. And still ahead, details on a new Twitter feature that lets you post a tweet to a select set of people. Up next, how San Antonio's Dangerous Assessment Response Team, or DART, recently stepped in to help a criminal problem in an east side neighborhood. Taking a look outside with live cam, we are starting off humid again at 77 degrees and uh, hoping that we'll get some rain again. We'll be right back. Just about 514 this morning, there is some relief for one San Antonio neighborhood. That's after months of frustrating problems finally led to a bust on the city's east side. A search warrant led the city's dangerous assessment response team, better known as DART, to a home on Creekmore Drive. And officers tell us they found drugs, guns, and even made three arrests. Deputy City Attorney Joe Nino explains why this bust was so important for the neighbors' peace of mind. We had everything from shots being fired at the location, and narcotics being uh, dealt at the location, um, multiple family disturbances. We have prostitution coming out of there. He says for a DART unit to execute a search warrant of a property, there needs to be two years of documented criminal or code violations. Time now, 514 and 77 degrees right now. Up next, Samsung rebranding its Samsung TV Plus service by adding more free channels and content. Ever wonder what everyone's doing on their phones? They're banking with Bank of America. The groom's parents, they just found out they can redeem rewards for a second honeymoon. Romance is in the air. Like these two. He's realizing he's in love and that his dating app just went up. Must be fate. And Phil, he forgot a gift, so he's sending the happy couples some money. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop banking. What would you like the power to do? More and more cat parents are feeding tastefuls from Blue Buffalo because it's tasty and healthy. Wow. And now Blue Tastefuls comes in single serve portions. Just snap it, peel it, pop it, chop it. Pick up Tastefuls singles and find out why one taste is all it takes. It's the most Claritin provides non-drowsy symptom relief from over 200 indoor and outdoor allergens day after day. Feel the clarity and make today the most wonderful time of the year. Live Claritin clear. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is launching a new feature to give you more control over who sees your tweets. Users can add up to 150 people to their circle. Only those select people are able to view and interact with tweets that are shared in that circle. A green badge will alert users when tweets are only available to that group. High-speed internet has come to the high seas. Royal Caribbean is adding SpaceX's Starlink satellite network to its ships, which will provide high-speed internet for passengers. Royal Caribbean hopes to provide the capability by the end of the year. And Samsung is giving its customers more. The company has added more free channels and more content to its TV Plus lineup, which already includes ABC News Live. Also on the way, two exclusive Samsung-owned channels. Those are your Tech Bytes. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. Right now, 518, 77 degrees. And we see some flashing lights over there at I-35 and Highway 90. Yeah, it looks like a stall 18-wheeler there, Mark Steph. As we get a wider look at Transguide, this is off 35 in the northbound lanes right there near US 90. Transguide, our friends at Transguide were able to get us that shot, and you can see that we do have first responders out there on the scene. Right now, it's not causing any issues in those directions of the northbound lanes of 35, but something to watch out for. An uh, area that's well lit, as you can see there, but still, you have to watch out for for those crews out there working to help the driver out. Let's take you to the map because thankfully, as I mentioned, still pretty quiet this early in the morning. We really don't see a lot of slowdowns this early. However, we will see some work continue up here off 281 on the north side of San Antonio. Now, this is bridge work that we mentioned that has been taking place for a little while that will start and continue on Friday, September 9th. This is for those overnight owls or early bird commuters. Eight in the evening to five in the morning is when you can expect that work to take place. There's going to be a full closure of the intersection at Wilderness Oak, so just plan ahead and make sure again to watch out for the commute there. But as we take it back to Transguide, hopefully in the next few minutes, we're going to have a better update here. And Justin, the roads look dry from the shot at Transguide, but to the west of us, maybe a different story. 
Yeah, you're right, Stephen. We've had some pretty heavy rain west of San Antonio. A couple of showers here in town, but nothing that has uh, really put down a lot of rain. We've got to go out west here to find the really heavy stuff. And that right now is between Eagle Pass and Crystal City. We notice a lot of lightning strikes here, and this is torrential rainfall. There's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and that's going to put down some good rain. So let's start there. And uh, these are areas that already received some pretty good heavy rain yesterday, and there's more rain falling. Now, this is mainly over rural areas but it is starting to work north towards Brackettville, so we'll keep an eye on that. Any one of these cells, especially if there's a little bit of training, uh, could start to cause some flooding. So flood watches, again, west of San Antonio this morning. Along Highway 90, we'll watch that closely too. Brackettville to over to Uvalde. Uvalde got a heavy storm a little bit earlier this morning. And then areas that saw very good rain yesterday, parts of Bandera and Hondo, or uh, Medina County, I should say, uh, still seeing some rain this morning. That This area here in western uh, Bandera County picked up close to seven inches of rain. So any additional rainfall is going to cause some issues. We'll keep an eye on that. Right now, no flash flood warnings in effect, thankfully. And as we look back at Bear County here, we've had a couple of showers work through, but nothing at the moment. Things are pretty quiet. I think we'll see a few more pop up this morning. And especially as we get some daytime heating today, some isolated to widely scattered storms. Not everyone's going to get rain. Again, it's one of those situations, and I know we kind of missed out on the rain yesterday. Let me show you the current setup, and you can see this big swath of rain starting to move north into our western counties. That's why that flash flood watch is in effect through Thursday morning. It includes Del Rio, Rock Springs, Eagle Pass. And as we zoom out some, the reason for that is an upper level low. It's actually moving west and moving away from us. And it will continue to do so today. You can see it very nicely here on the water vapor that's been right there. That's the upper level low that has uh, brought the heavy rain to parts of our viewing area. So let's look at the forecast here. 30% chance of rain for San Antonio. Obviously higher chances out west. And by 6 p.m. this evening, it'll just be that hit or miss pop up stuff. And by tomorrow morning, same story. Some showers and storms early and a 30% chance of rain during the afternoon. So we're just going to keep that 30% chance going really all the way through Friday before rain chances go back up this weekend. Right now we've got 77 degrees and cloudy skies at the airport. Dew point is at 73. It's going to be humid all day long. 78 by 9 o'clock. By noontime we're at 85, 20% chance of rain. There's that 30% chance by 4 or 5 o'clock. Temperatures make their way up to the low 90s. It'll feel hotter than that because of the humidity. And we do need to touch on the tropics real quick. Several areas out in the Atlantic that uh, we need to watch in the next couple days. Really, this one of most concern likely becoming a name storm here in the coming days. But all of this staying out over the Atlantic for now none of which look to be affecting land, at least for the moment. Uh, again, something we'll watch and nothing that looks like it will affect Texas at this point. 30% chance of rain tomorrow, 30% chance of rain Friday. We bring the rain chances up Saturday, Sunday and for Labor Day as well. So yeah, maybe we didn't get rain yesterday. There are more opportunities coming our way all the way through the seven day forecast, guys. We're OK with the rain, though. Yep. Thank you, Justin. By 23, 77 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, Spider-Man and Jaws are returning the theaters to liven up the Labor Day weekend box office. Studios don't like to open new movies on Labor Day weekends. It's typically one of the slowest weekends of the year at the box office. Instead, this year they're bringing back a couple of old favorites. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Spider-Man No Way Home first hit theaters last December, and eight months later, it's ready to add to its $1.9 billion worldwide box office. Columbia Pictures is re-releasing the film this weekend in more than 3,800 theaters, with 11 minutes of added footage. Universal is going back to the original summer blockbuster, re-releasing 1975's Jaws in more than 1,200 North American theaters. You can't just show up here with no warning. What's wrong? Did something happen? Yes. Here's your first look at The Sun, starring Hugh Jackman, Laura Dern, Vanessa Kirby, and Anthony Hopkins. The drama from Florian Zeller, the writer-director of The Father, lands in theaters in November. American musician Calvin Jones at the piano and his Ukrainian wife Inga fled Kyiv in February as bombs rained down around their apartment building. 
Unable to return, he's written After the Conquest, a dedication to the heroes of Ukraine, a reminder to the Ukrainian people to not give up and to the rest of the world to not forget. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Right now it's 527. Still ahead on GMSA, nuclear inspectors are making a risky high-stakes trip to examine Europe's largest nuclear plant as Russia's invasion of Ukraine nears 200 days of war. Plus a new warning about more children getting a hold of those dangerous button batteries from common household devices. And we'll tell you about a pet at the Animal Defense League that needs a new home this morning. And ahead on GMSA 6, could you be over-parenting your child? We'll tell you what that means. It'll give you some signs to look out for. Making headlines this morning, nuclear inspectors making a high risky, high-stakes trip to inspect a Ukrainian nuclear power plant as Russian attacks continue. And taking a look outside with a live cam for now, a humid 77 degrees, but some people that didn't get rain yesterday, maybe they'll get it today. Oh, it feels like down at the coast out there this morning because of all the humidity. Good morning, everybody. Let's wrap up the month of August. It's Wednesday, the 31st. It's been a pretty good month as far mm -hmm. as the temperatures go, and we got some rain. And we got out of August without another 100 degree day, as Yay. we wished. I don't, I don't think we're going to set that record. Uh, it's pretty wild. I really did think that that was a, a for sure thing but the tropical air mass moved in it replaced our desert air mass that we had all summer and here we are we've got showers and storms going this morning now i'll tell you the morning commute here in san antonio looks just fine at this point all the heavy rain is to the west and we continue to pick up on some very heavy rain across parts of maverick county this morning with some lightning strikes here let's first start though with san antonio we've had a couple showers here on the far northwest side those have dissipated so most of San Antonio is dry. That's not to say we couldn't see a few more showers pop up uh, that could affect your morning commute. But at the moment, there is just not much there. This is the area that I'm concerned about because we already got heavy rain here last night. And here we go again. More showers and storms, lightning strikes. And this is likely torrential rain. This is mainly over rural areas, but uh, any roadways out here could see uh, some flooding. And this is going to work its way up towards Brackettville here next couple of hours. So we'll keep an eye on that swath of rain as it does make its way north and west. There are flood watches in effect for the western parts of our viewing area. This is going to go through 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Pollen count, if you missed it yesterday, molds and fall elms still moderate, so those are the big issues here. We'll get the new pollen count in here in a couple of hours. And in case that 12-hour forecast, just a 20% chance rain here in San Antonio this morning. 20% chance new time, 85. We're up around 91 this afternoon, 30% chance of rain. So it'll be isolated to widely scattered. But there could be some pockets where some good rainfall falls again. And we're expecting more chances of rain into the weekend. Another look at that seven-day forecast is coming up. But let's get over to Stephen now. Any more issues out there this morning? Well, we still have that stalled vehicle there off the 35 at 90, but let's get a quick look around town because I tend at the wide there at Hackberry. Things look fine. You can see pretty quiet still actually now that the commute is getting going a little bit more, but 35 southbound there at Maine. The commute, as you can see, traffic already picking up. Uh, however, as I was looking at the map, we did notice that a crash popped up right there along I-35 near Cesar Chavez. I'm going to get that pinpointed, but and I'll give our friends at Transit a call to find out exactly how that's going to be impacted in the commute, but right now really nothing major is going to be slowing down drivers this early in the morning, and that's the same for anyone that plans on heading to the Alamo City because that journey from Bernie 24 minutes in the north eastbound lanes of I 10. So just watch out again uh, because we although we have a dry commute, some other areas saw some rain 24 26 minutes. I should say out 281 southbound traveling in from Bolverde and a 25 minute drive time from I 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So no worries there, but as we take it back to trans guide, things look a little quiet there. 281 at St. Mary's. We'll find out what's going on off of 35 near Caesar Chavez and give you those updates in the next few minutes. Guys. Stephen, thank you. We need to warn you, some of the images and subject matter in this next story on the war in Ukraine are graphic. This morning, nuclear inspectors are making a dangerous trip to examine Europe's largest nuclear power plant. This is Russia's lethal invasion of Ukraine nears 200 days of war. CNN's John Lawrence has the latest. People lie amongst rubble as smoke from a Russian military strike fills the air. A grim scene in Kharkiv Park where at least one person has been killed. In the central part of the city, smoke rises through the mangled metal of a rooftop, Russian shelling claiming the lives of at least three more people and wounding nine others. 
This, as a team from the International Atomic Energy Agency arrived in Ukraine with hopes to inspect the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant that has been suffering damage from fires and has had its reactors knocked offline multiple times after being caught in the crossfire of Russian and Ukrainian forces. We want the IAEA mission, headed by Director Grossi, to find a way to reach the plant via our forces and security corridors and to do their utmost to avoid all the dangers this poses to the world. The European Union is now set to deliver more than 5 million potassium iodide tablets to Ukraine to protect against potential radiation exposure. I think uh, things are inching closer to a potential disaster, but hopefully the IA mission will focus uh, more international attention on this crisis, put more pressure on Russia uh, to stand down and to stop using the plant as a shield and therefore take it out of the line of fire. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The price of oil fell more than 5% in trading Tuesday. For now, it's settled at $91.64 a barrel. That's the lowest price in five weeks. Analysts believe the decline was fueled by worries over the world economy. Overall, the price is trending down, with prices in the U.S. 30% lower since spiking at more than $130 a barrel back in March. That is translating to lower prices at gas stations for consumers. The national average now at $3.84 a gallon. Common steroids used to treat asthma and other autoimmune conditions has been linked to brain decline. Now that's according to a new study published in the British medical journal Open. Researchers found that taking oral or inhaled glucocorticoids may be linked to damaging changes in the white matter of the brain. Now having lower levels of white matter can slow the brain's ability to process information pay attention and remember. It's also been connected to psychiatric issues such as depression, anxiety, and irritability. Experts say these could be temporary effects as white matter can repair itself. This inhaler should not be confused with quick relief inhalers like albuterol. Well, you didn't want to be walking or driving, for that matter, in Memphis yesterday. Police there had to shut down part of an interstate when a big rig hauling Alfredo sauce crashed into a wall. All right, let's take a look at this together now. The crash at jars of the creamy sauce crashing down onto the freeway. It happened on I-55 during afternoon rush hour in Memphis. The already shut down the northbound lanes as road crews worked to clean up the creamy mess. The southbound traffic was cut down to one lane. One woman was hospitalized, but she is expected to be okay. What a mess. I mean, oh my goodness. do you call in fire crews and just hose it off or what? I guess. Mm. I mean, if it was a sunny day too. Or somebody take breadsticks and go, mm. <laughs> no. bon appetit. <laughs> no. 537, 76 degrees. And still ahead, how a new partnership is making Uber safer for customers. And next, an important new warning for parents and grandparents about those button batteries that we all have in our houses. And taking a look outside with a live cam, expecting more rain today, which is, you know, good news. Hopefully we'll, everybody will get their shot today. We'll be right back. Five forty. they were found in gadgets all over most homes. A small lithium battery is known as button batteries. They can be dangerous, even deadly if consumed. And as CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, there is an increasing number of young children who are eating them. They can be found in TV remotes, key fobs, toys, even greeting cards. But button batteries can be dangerous, even deadly, if swallowed. As tiny as they are, they can cause a lot of damage. A new report in the medical journal Pediatrics estimates there were 70,322 battery-related emergency room visits among children between 2010 and 2019. That's twice as high as the previous nine-year period. And button batteries were linked to 85% of visits where the type of battery was identified. Children under five visited the ER the most frequently, especially toddlers between the ages of one and two who often put things they find into their mouths. Just literally burns through pretty much every tissue it gets in touch with. If your child has ingested something you suspect is a battery, get immediate medical attention. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Perva Grover says not to induce vomiting. That can cause this, these batteries to go other places in the body. Then we have to go fishing, finding them and causes damage 
whatever it's going. Prevention is key. Never leave batteries sitting out. Store spare batteries out of reach of little hands. Make sure all battery compartments are secured shut in household devices. You can use strong tape for another layer of protection or buy products that require a screwdriver in order to get to the battery. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Time now, 542 and 76 degrees for now. Up next, we're checking with the ADL. There you are, uh, we've got a cute kitten that is looking for a new home. Could that be you? Well, I still always say there's nothing prettier than a little black cat and those kind of almost olive colored eyes. Gorgeous. Nadia's here from the Animal Defense League and who is this little baby? This is Pip and he Hi, is baby. two years old. I mean, two years old, two months old. Hi. Uh, and he just is ready for adoption. Just came out of foster. And as you can see, he's not scared of you because he's very socialized and which is one of the benefits of foster. It takes a lot of work off your hands because you have so many kittens and puppies. Oh so, gosh, and, yes. and the thing is too, with fostering, you can pick what you want. Right. Itty yes. bitties, a little bit bigger ones, and for whatever time you want, right? Absolutely. So you can do a week, uh, a couple of uh, months, um, but yeah, for her, her uh, they were, it was about four weeks, I think, so yeah. Okay. And it could be even be mom and newborns. If Absolutely, you want to. mom but, and newborns. Yeah, that, that really helps them out quite a bit. And it's a great way for maybe the kids, little ones to see if they really want to take care of a puppy or a kitty, because there's a lot of work involved. Absolutely, and it gives us more space also, you know. Yeah. So you're fostering for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. It allows us to save more lives. So definitely consider fostering. And also kids can get volunteer hours by doing mm -hmm. it too. So, a lot of benefits for everybody involved. And if you'd like more information on little baby Pip, I know, kitty. Yes, indeed. Head on over to the Animal Defense League over there, 11300 Nacogdoches, pardon me, the Paul Jolly Center, or PetSmart on Four Winds, 655 1481. Thank you, dear. <laughs> Thank you. How cute. In your morning consumer headlines, Uber is taking action to help improve safety for its users. Now, customers will now be able to connect with a live agent from ADT Security. Uber officials say the agent will monitor the entire route. Uber says this can help ease potentially uncomfortable situations like a driver running low on gas or a ride through an unfamiliar neighborhood. Lyft has had this security feature for the past few years. The battle against inflation could strike a major blow to the job market, according to analysis from RSM. If the Federal Reserve revises its inflation target to 3%, the economy would still need to slow down, resulting in the loss of 1.7 million jobs. That would cause the national unemployment rate to rise from 3.5% to 4.6%. And researchers say that is a best-case scenario. The Fed focuses on getting inflation to drop back to 2%, more than 5 million jobs in America could vanish. Last week, Fed Chair Jerome Powell warned that not getting a tight grip on inflation could result in major financial problems for the U.S. in the future. And time now is 547. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, thankfully, no problems here on the road. We get a look there at 35 North at Loop 410. Traffic's getting moving now that we're inching closer to 6 a.m. And you can see there uh, we have a few more folks out this early in the morning getting ready to start that Wednesday. So just drive safe. Again, no need to rush if you are still at home. Enjoying your cup of coffee. Enjoy it, and uh, you'll enjoy your drive to work right now. As you can see, nothing really major. Uh, our trans guide cameras are not really picking up a whole lot out there. Just a few more vehicles. But we take you to the map and I did get an update from our friends at TxDOT. Let's go ahead and bring you in here because we did have a crash that was reported right there along I-35 southbound near Caesar East Chavez. Wasn't causing any issues, but uh, we do know that has now cleared out, so that's some good news. But also make sure to plan ahead of time. Although we are already approaching September, we're going to continue to see some work out over here off Loop 1604 on the northeast side. One more night of it, overhead structure work. We told you about this at the beginning of the week. We're going to see it wrap up tonight, Wednesday, August 31st from 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. They expect some alternating main lane closures from Palisades Drive to Pat Booker Road. But of course, that information along with other closure spots on our website at kset.com slash traffic. We still have this situation there off 35 at US 90. But Justin, other than that, it's been a quiet morning here in town. Good to see. A quick survey here in the studio. Who got rain yesterday? Show of hands. Uh, I had cloudy, I had cloudy skies. So it's like, called crickets, Justin. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't tweet me. Okay. Uh, yeah, we didn't get a lot of rain here in San Antonio yesterday, and I know that made some folks, uh, you know, frustrated. But 
we got rain all around us and sometimes it's just the way it goes. It, there's no reason, rhyme or reason for it. It's just luck. And that's uh, the way it played out yesterday. Some places got way too much. 7.26 inches there in western parts of Bandera County. Kerrville about three quarters of an inch. San Antonio nothing but Blanco nearly half an inch. Floresville seven tenths of an inch and then some big time totals. Eagle Pass, Del Rio, but even bigger numbers, Northern Maverick County. And that's where we're seeing more rain this morning, which is why there are some concerns for flooding. A little closer look here around Bear County. Converse did get some good rain yesterday, 2.42 there. Adkins, nearly half an inch lidl, picked up close to an inch. So let's get to the radar now. There is the heavy rain out west. We noticed another little patch of rain moving through Pearsall and then rain up around Lakey. Just not much here around San Antonio. And I don't know that we're going to see a ton this morning. There are going to be some pop up showers. And then as we get some daytime heating today, you'll see isolated to widely scattered showers this afternoon. But the main concern, as we've been saying most of the morning, is out to the west. So Crystal City, Crystal Springs, Eagle Pass up to Brackenville. And let me switch the radar real quick. And get a little closer radar, a little better view here. A lot of lightning strikes, and this is the patch of heavy rain that really is going to probably put down some good rainfall rates. And I would say around Brackenville, expect some minor street flooding this morning. Some of this is going to work towards Del Rio as well. And you saw some minor flooding yesterday. Look for that again. And we'll keep an eye out for any sort of warnings or anything like that. Like that. Right now, just some flood advisories for these areas of heavier rain. Uh, here's the setup. And we noticed that most of the rain is west of I-35. There's flash flood watch in these areas through tomorrow morning. And the reason for that area of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and that's moving west. It's moving away from us, and that will take a lot of the heavier rain with it. Although I still think we'll see some isolated to uh, widely scattered showers and storms today, about a 30% chance. This is 6 o'clock. And you see some of the activity, not as widespread as yesterday. And then maybe some showers tomorrow morning with uh, additional showers and storms coming up on Thursday. 30% chance there as well. As we go outside for you, cloudy skies, 77 degrees. Dew point is at 73. Most everyone is in the 70s, 80 right now in Katua. And we'll start off in the mid to upper 70s uh, this morning before making our way into the 90s this afternoon. 20% chance of rain early. And then we bring that up to a 30% chance of rain by, say, 3, 4, 5 o'clock. Mostly cloudy skies, 91. Your high temperature today. And rain chances down the line, there's more opportunities. 30% chance tomorrow, 30% chance Friday, 40% chance Saturday. Best chance probably Sunday, maybe even into Monday as we have some deep moisture in place and more disturbances rolling through. So the seven-day forecast still looks good. We've got temperatures in the low 90s for the most part, maybe some upper 80s Sunday and Monday associated with some of those better rain chances. Certainly no 100s in the forecast uh, as we head into September, guys. Goodness. Yeah, we're happy about that. It's very nice. Thank you, Justin. Yep. All right, we'll keep an eye on storms for you this morning, folks. 552, 76 degrees. The new streaming series debuting on Prime Video this week brings viewers back to a world inspired by Middle Earth. We're going to have a special first look next. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we will begin with the big headline of the Justice Department uh, challenging former President Trump's narrative of the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago, a blistering rebuke of his request to appoint someone to review the seized documents. We're going to have the latest there. And the state of emergency in Jackson, Mississippi, the state's biggest city without reliable running water. We're live on the ground. And behind me, it looks like paradise until you look closer. This influx of a seaweed called sargasm. It is a brown algae that floats usually out in the sea, but for the last decade has progressively been making it throughout the Caribbean, Mexico, even Florida. It is impacting tourism, people's health, and animals. We're going to get into all of that coming up right here on GMA. We thought the war at last was ended. Fans of J.R.R. Tolkien's novels and the films made from them have a new era of Middle Earth to explore in The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. We thought our light would never dim. Taking place several millennia before the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, the series features familiar names from the elves. It's yeah. really the job of dreams. I'm, I got to learn so many skills. I got to work with so many people, like, worked with the best craftsmen mm -hmm. in all of New Zealand. To the humans. There's signposts along the way for some of the canon characters that we, that, that we kind of, y y you know the trajectory that you're going towards, but the exciting thing is how do you get there? One day this will be your kingdom. And the dwarves. 
Durin is a, a, a prince of Khazad Doom, and he's in line, uh, you know, to the th first in line to the throne. Uh, he's married to Disa, and he's friends with Elrond. But we Harfoots have each other. There are no hobbits, but their close relatives, the Harfoots, are integral to the story. They're quite hilarious. They've got a lot of heart and a lot of a lot of joy, even you know amidst all of all of the danger that constantly is around the corner for them. And one of those dangers is a dark power casting a shadow across Middle Earth. He has not one name, but many. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, high school vol volleyball is starting to heat up. We'll bring you some of the highlights from last night's matchups. Jonathan Cotto will be live with the very latest on an overnight fire on San Antonio's west side. And Stephen is tracking traffic for us on our Wednesday, the last day of the month of August. Any storms going to make it to San Antonio? We'll also check in with Justin. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio Fire Department investigating a fire on the city's west side. Coming up on GMSA, we'll have all the details. And a lot of questions this morning following an overnight shooting on the far west side of town. We're going to bring you everything we know so far. Fewer animals seem to be leaving animal care services. We'll tell you why and what comes next. And taking a look outside with a live cam. No rain in this shot, but some areas getting heavy rain all over San Antonio. We're going to be checking in with Justin very soon. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is August 31st. Thanks for joining us. I hope you had a good week so far. It's been nice to have a little break with the showers. And I have a confession to make. I just totally messed up Justin Horn. Uh, we were messing with our storyteller over here, and I tried to jump in and help, and I totally messed things up. So he's here. Uh, we're just trying to figure out what I did wrong. They hooked us up in the control room. Thank oh, you, guys. You I apologize to everybody. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. It's, it's technology. It happens sometimes. Yeah, we and Jamie's going to rush in here. She knows what to do. Jamie, you're, you, sh do you wear capes, Jamie? <laughs> High five. Here anyway. she is. So next, she's going to fix month. it. There we next go. Next month she will. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, anyway, we're looking at the radar right now. We've got some showers and stars out to the west of San Antonio. And uh, these are working north. This is the area we're concerned about there, Eagle Pass up to Del Rio, and that's where we could see some pockets of heavier rain that will set up. Uh, thank you, Jamie, so much. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. It's fixed. Hey. Some, some lightning strikes here. Here we go. Uh, this is what we're looking at this morning. And this is the area uh, we're most concerned with, and that's where we could see some flooding this morning. Now, this is west of San Antonio. So here in town, there's just not much going on, and I don't expect to see much for the morning commute. So roads should generally stay dry. Can't roll out an isolated shower storm as possible but the better chances are going to be well to our west. And uh, it is, again, this area here, Brackenville, the Eagle Pass, where there is going to be some flooding, I think, this morning. And we have flood watches in effect there through tomorrow morning as an up-level low pushes west and moves away from us. So the KSAT 12-hour forecast for San Antonio, 20% chance of rain this morning. And then we bump it up to 30% chance of rain by 2 o'clock. Temperatures will be in the low 90s today. Hot and steamy. But that chance of rain and more opportunities, especially as we get into the weekend. We'll look at that forecast in just a bit. Let's go over to Stephen now with a look at how the roads are going this morning. So far, so good, Justin. Let's get a quick look there at 35, uh, one of the busier spots as we start to see the morning commute pickup. 35 there north at Loop 410. A lot more folks out there this early in the morning, so just take it easy. This is the hour when uh, we really start to see those bumps in the road, so just take it easy out there. No need to rush. Some of these roads were a little bit damped earlier this morning, but other places uh, actually, I'm not sure what's going on there at 37 at Houston, but just watch out nonetheless because we do have a few more folks getting their morning start. Started. But uh, taking you to the map, no issues to report. We did have at least one crash that was reported near 35, close to the Y, but that has already cleared out, so we're really not seeing it cause any issues anymore. If you are going to be traveling into San Antonio, the situation remains the same. 29 minutes if you're traveling in those northbound lanes from 37, pretty pleasant from Pleasanton, I'd say. 30 minutes on US 90 if you're traveling in the eastbound lanes heading in from Castorville and your arrival from Lytle, about a 17-minute drive time. So no worries, no need to rush out the door this early in the morning. Of course, we are going to continue to track traffic as the morning commute does pick up and have those updates right here on GMSA. Mark Zuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio Fire Department responding to a fire at a home on the city's west side. We're learning the cause of the fire. Rather, the fire caused at least $10,000 in damages. Jonathan Cotto joins us live downtown with more. Good morning, Jonathan. Do we know if anyone was hurt? 
Good morning, Mark. And you know, that's the good news this morning that no injuries were reported. And that's because nobody was living at this home. But we can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. We know San Antonio firefighters responded to the 700 block of South San Agustin. This is near South General McMullen and Highway 90, close to or just minutes after 1 o'clock this morning. Now, although the cause of the fire is under investigation, we do know the fire started in, in, in an outside shed that quickly spread to the eaves and the overhangs of the main structure that you see there on your screen. And luckily, firefighters were able to work quickly because as we know, these homes on the city's west side are pretty close to each other. So they responded quickly, avoiding preventing those flames to spread to any neighboring homes. Now back out live, as you mentioned, the fire officials telling us that uh, there are at least $10,000 worth in damages. Again, no injuries were reported. The cause of this fire, again, remains under investigation. Reporting Live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. Also new this morning, an investigation also underway after a person was found dead with a gunshot wound in the parking lot of a fireworks stand in far west Bear County. This all unfolded around 1 o'clock this morning at WT Montgomery, just north of Highway 90. Right now, details are quite limited. We're working to get you more information as it becomes available. And we are trying to learn more about the response to the shooting at Robb Elementary. Several law enforcement agencies were there for more than an hour before taking down the shooter. Now, Case at 12 joined other media outlets to obtain records from the city of Uvalde, the Uvalde County Sheriff's Office, and Uvalde CISD. This is in addition to another lawsuit against the Texas Department of Public Safety. And in just under a week, students in Uvalde will be heading back to the classroom for the first time since their last school year ended in tragedy. We have heard parents calling for safety and security changes, and we're going to have more on that coming up in our next half hour of GMSA. This morning, San Antonio police and crime stoppers are hoping you can help them track down the suspects in two cases. First up, a road rage incident that ended in a shooting it happened last Thursday on 35 at I-10. The victim told police the suspect drove up and started firing shots. He found two bullet holes in his vehicle. Also this morning, the search on for a woman police say robbed a Dollar General store happened earlier this month at a store on Culebra. Investigators say the woman packed her cart with merchandise and walked to the front registers, which told she pretended to look through her purse, then walked right out of the store. The uh, victim fought her out tried to stop her. I assume that would be a store employee tried to stop her. That's when the woman pulled out a knife and took off. Call Crime Stoppers if you have any information about either of these cases. That number is 224-STOP. It is the first in years for San Antonio. Fewer animals are leaving animal care services. Ms. Patty Santos explains the backup is highlighting several issues. ACS pet surrenders are up 128% thanks in part to evictions. Some of the strays picked up are also unsocialized, making it harder for them to get adopted. ACS is also dealing with staffing shortages. The rising cost to spay and neuter animals is also a problem given San Antonio's animal overpopulation. Spay and neuter is going to address the problem of overpopulation period, uh, which is absolutely going to help our live release rate, but I think it needs to be the key tenant that we base everything else on. Keeping that population down is going to be the solution you know, in the future to having too many animals in San Antonio, which leads to too many animals at homes, which leads to too many animals on the streets. ACS says it is working on a strategic plan to rethink the way it does business. Details of the plan will be released to council later in the fall. For Good Morning San Antonio, Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. 607, 76 degrees. And it's been 25 years since the death of Princess Diana. Coming up a little later, we're going to take a look at how many are remembering her. Also coming up, remembering Mikhail Gorbachev this morning, the man who set out to revitalize the Soviet Union, but ended up unleashing forces that led to the collapse of communism. More on his legacy after the break. And taking a look outside with live cam, we've had a Nice week so far with the chances of rain. Right now, it's kind of humid, 76 degrees. We'll be right back. Just about 12 past the hour, an update on the $15 million in extra revenue CPS Energy paid to the city of San Antonio. Several council members seem to be backing away from giving customers that one-time $29 credit on their October bill. 
Instead, some council members talked about using the money for weatherization. Mayor Ron Nierberg is backing a rebate, but is open to other options as long as there is an effective plan to go with it. Next week's vote is now being delayed to allow council members to continue their discussion. In your morning consumer headlines, the number of jobs available across the country. Uh, new federal data shows 11.2 million job postings as of the end of July, nearly two jobs for every American looking for work. That's a bump up compared to June and the first increase after three months of declines. And with gas prices down, consumer confidence is up. The conference board says its index of consumer confidence rose in August compared to July. AAA says the nationwide average for a gallon of regular is now down to $3.85 a gallon after rising to more than $5 a gallon in mid-June. High school volleyball is starting to heat up, and the KSAT 12 sports team has you covered. Coming a little bit later in the newscast, highlights from some of last night's matchups. And time now, 613. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, you know, just to give some context here. We have about 20 shots from Trans Guy that they provide us. Said this one shot here off 35 at US 90 hasn't really changed much. You can see that we do have an 18 wheeler out there that is experiencing some trouble in the northbound lanes of 35 right there near US 90 as folks are approaching to the San Antonio area. So watch out because we do have a first responder out there working to assist them. You can see them right there behind the, the truck, but uh, sometimes it could be pretty dark out there and we can see a first responder a crew member working to check out or inspect that vehicle so you have to watch out drive carefully through that area let's take a look at the map because nothing else is being reported at this time we have been combing through the trans guide cameras it doesn't look like anything is showing up just yet but things can always change in a matter of moments so just remember to drive safe we also want to remind you of some work that's taking place here on the south side of san antonio right there along loop 410 utility work and according to text out we're going to see the work continue just another day or so. So this began on Tuesday, August 30th, and according to TxDOT, should wrap on Thursday, September 1st. That's tomorrow, so keep in mind, this will be from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, and that's when we can see a single main lane closure in both directions from Old Pearsall Road to I-37, but you know where to find that information on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. You can grab your phones and open that camera app, scan the QR code that will take you directly there, and of course, that has a list of all the closures that are happening in and around around the Alamo City, but taking it back to TransGuide, thankfully no other issues to report just yet. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Steph and I uh, have been watching Radar along with Justin. It's been very busy again this morning. Yeah, especially to the west of us. And that's where the bulk of the heavy rain is this morning, and that's where most of it will stay. We've got some isolated showers and storms that will redevelop this afternoon, but we're not going to get the coverage we got yesterday. We first start, though, with the heavy rain. Brackettville, that's where the rain's coming down. And uh, we're seeing some rainfall rates up there at about six inches per hour. So we know there's going to be some minor street flooding. So far, thankfully, no flash flood warnings, just some flood advisories. And one good thing I'm seeing is that this rain is actually moving. Uh, for a time yesterday, some of this activity was just sitting there. And we picked up some really uh, large amounts of rain. Again, right now, this is uh, working its way through uh, the Highway 90 area there around Brackettville. We are seeing some lightning strikes, and this is going to work its way up towards Del Rio. So expect some rain there. And there could be some minor street flooding. We've also got to keep a close eye on this activity you see up here around Lakey and western parts of Bandera County. This was an area that got a ton of rain yesterday. And so any additional rainfall on top of that could cause some more issues. Meantime, here in Bear County, I'm going to switch radar sites here. Uh, things are, are pretty quiet. We're not seeing a whole lot here across the city. And I don't expect a ton this morning. There could be a few isolated showers and storms that pop up, but nothing at the moment. And as Stephen pointed out, it has been a dry commute so far. So as you drop the kids off this morning, I'd give them an umbrella just in case. But uh, there's, a, there's a chance we may not meet it, need it today with all of the uh, significant rain off to our west. Flash flood watch in effect for these areas, by the way, through Thursday morning. And the reason for that, we've got an upper level low that's spinning out here across west Texas. We can see this very nicely on water vapor. There's the spin right there. This is actually moving west and away from us. So that takes some of the better rain chances with it, at least for now. 30% chance of rain today with that heavy rain ending out west, and then we'll get some more pop-ups by the afternoon. So this is around 6 o'clock. We'll keep in that 30% chance of rain for San Antonio. Some showers tomorrow morning, cloudy skies to start, and then mostly cloudy to partly cloudy during the afternoon with a 30% chance of rain on your Thursday. There's the scene outside. Cloudy skies, 77. Dew point is at 73. In the case that 12 hour forecast, 20% chance of rain through the morning, 
Uh, 1 o'clock, 88 degrees, 20% chance of rain, but we bump it up to a 30% chance, as we said, by late this afternoon and this evening. We see temperatures top out at about 91 or so. It'll feel warmer than that because we'll have so much humidity in place. We've got to talk about the tropics, too. Nothing that's in the Caribbean or Gulf of Mexico, but as you head out towards the Atlantic, it does get significantly more busy. There's a system here that likely is going to be a, a named storm. Now the question is, where does it go from there? probably stays out in the Atlantic, may cause some issues for the East Coast. Other areas, this one we're not going to worry about too much, but this one off the coast of Africa, about a 40% chance of development. We'll keep you posted. Nothing that looks like it's going to affect Texas at this point, at least not anytime soon. 30% chance of rain tomorrow, 30% chance on Friday. We bring the rain chances back up, though, Saturday, Sunday, as another disturbance rolls in. We could see some more pockets of heavy rain, and that continues over into Labor Day. So if you have Labor Day plans outside, stay tuned. We'll keep you posted on that. It's not going to be raining this entire time, but there will be uh, areas of showers and storms from time to time throughout that forecast. Mark. Justin, thank you. Now the death of Mikhail Gorbachev, the final leader of the Soviet Union, the man who ended the Cold War and lifted the Iron Curtain. But his legacy is a complicated one. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has more. This morning, people around the world are remembering Mikhail Gorbachev, a man who played a complicated and unique role in history. Gorbachev sought more peaceful relations with the West when he was named president of the Soviet Union in 1985. The birthmark on his head made him instantly recognizable, and he quickly gained star power in America. I just dropped by with present for warming of house. Instead, find you grappling with local off. Oh, brought some of your commie friends to help you fight dirty, eh? Then President Reagan addressing Gorbachev in his famous speech at the Berlin Wall. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Gorbachev ended the Cold War without bloodshed before resigning in 1991, but he failed to prevent the collapse of the Soviet Union, which fractured into 15 territories. He ran for president against Boris Yeltsin in 1996, coming in seventh with less than 1% of the vote. During an interview with Larry King, Gorbachev said this about how he wanted to be remembered. History is a capricious lady, but I, I hope that it will uh, judge me fairly. Why hide your skin? If Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixin helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixin, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. And welcome back. It is 623. High school volleyball is heating up now that early season tournaments have come to a close. Case at 12's Andrew Seeley traveled across San Antonio to cover last night's action, including a District 20, 29 6 day showdown between O'Connor and Harlan. Well, O'Connor versus Harlan was a great matchup on paper. Two 20 win teams going head to head in their second district 29 6 a matches of the season right here at Paul Taylor Fieldhouse. But the Panthers took control of this one from the opening set and never looked back, cruising to a convincing sweep of the Hawks on Tuesday night. <laughs> It really shows that our practice pays off. Um, we work hard, we watch film, we make sure we focus on what we need to focus on. I believe we did that this match and that's why we got with the win we got. O'Connor was rolling on both offense and defense. Senior Kelly Fording led the way with 14 kills and added the block. Junior Laney Blake dished out 21 assists and junior libero Carly Chavez had 15 digs. 
is the Panthers' third straight victory. They're now 25-4 and four overall, and they learned a lot after going head-to-head -head with some of the best teams in the state at Volleypalooza last week. I feel like we are capable of beating really good teams and being one of the best teams. Um, those tournaments are really tough. They are the best teams in Texas, and I believe that um, coming out the way we did and performing the way we did like, gives us a really big shot. That wasn't the only match last night. Incarnate Word hosted Kerrville Tivy in one of the loudest gyms in San Antonio, and this one needed all five sets to determine a winner. Meanwhile, Southwest Legacy hosted Kennedy in a 5A, 4A matchup. You can catch extended highlights from all three of these matches right now on the BGC page at ksat.com. For KSAT 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Seeley. Time now, 624 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead on Team SA at 630, over parenting will tell you what it means and if you're doing it to your child. And cleanup is underway this morning after an overnight fire on the San Antonio's west side. Jonathan Cotto will join us live with the details. Trans guide right now and we are on the lookout for any potential showers in our area. Big storms to our west. We'll talk to Stephen and Justin coming up. Classes resume at Uvalde CISD in less than a week, and we have heard parents calling for safety and security changes ahead of the first day of school. However, it appears those changes will not be ready in time. Details ahead. A scary warning about a drug that looks just like candy, and it could be on your child's school campus. We'll explain. And this morning, we are remembering Princess Diana, who died tragically 25 years ago today. We're going to take a look at the memories she left behind. Outside with live cam, tons of humidity again, some morning clouds, not a lot happening here in San Antonio, but yet again this morning, big storms to the west of the Alamo City. We'll talk to Justin in a moment. Good morning. Time to wrap up the month of August. It is Wednesday, the 31st. Thanks for joining us. Uh, August hasn't been too bad, you know. No. Uh, overall, we, you know, temperatures kept low towards the end of August, and we got a lot of rain. We got our wish. We finally got that pattern. Although shift. too much rain, as expected, with some of these summertime storms. Isn't it funny how that works? Mm -hmm. We go from desert dry to now we've got some flooding issues out there. And yes, showers and storms still. Uh, producing some issues out west, and this is where we're going to watch throughout the morning these showers and storms here along the Rio Grande, Eagle Pass up to Del Rio, U Valley, Concan, Lakey. This is an area where we could see heavy rain on top of heavy rain that fell last night. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit closer first to San Antonio to show you that there is very little here. We had a couple showers earlier. Those have since dissipated. Morning commute looks generally dry. As we head into the afternoon, there will be some pop-up showers and storms. But the bulk of the heavy activity this morning stretches from Brackettville over to Del Rio. We were also noticing some more heavy rain around Lakey, uh, Concan near the Frio River and down towards Uvalde. This is all working north and west. Some flood advisories out. No flash flood warnings, at least at the moment. There is also a flood watch that uh, encompasses much of the western half of the viewing area. This is where we could see some minor street flooding. Uh, if that heavy rain persists, and it looks like it will throughout the morning hours. KSAT 12 hour forecast here in town 9 o'clock, 78 degrees, 20% chance of rain, 20% chance noontime, 85. And as we head into the afternoon, we'll bump rain chances up just a little bit, 30% chance. But it's that situation where not everyone's going to get rain. It'll be hit or miss type stuff. If you do get underneath, one of those pop-ups, it likely will put down some good rainfall. 91, the forecast high today. We've got some better chances of rain headed our way by the weekend. We'll get into those details here in just a few minutes. But now we check in with Steven and check in on that morning commute. Yeah, been a pretty uh, dry one, Justin. Thank you. Let's get a look at 410 at Broadway. Uh, you can see the traffic's already moving through there. This is a really busy time. 630 between 630, probably up until 830 is when the commute really gets going there. 281 South at Loop 410. Uh, you can see it's still dark outside too, so just take it easy. 281 at St. Mary's, you get a lot busier than what we showed you about an hour or so ago. But as the commute is shaping up, thankfully no major issues have been reported on the highways. You can see it's just been quiet. It's been green. Road mainly that we've been detecting on Transguide have also been dry, but uh, as it stayed quiet, we've been giving you those construction spots, those closures you can expect. But if you are going to be traveling into the Alamo City, there really is no need to rush, even though we are seeing more folks out there. Let's check out the travel times for these communities. I-10 westbound, still pretty green if you are traveling in from Seguin in the westbound lanes of I-10. 33 minutes on 87 northbound, traveling up from Lavernia in about half an hour from I from coming up from Floatisville. So you can see there, uh, we're just 
just seeing a lot of that same pattern. Just a lot of green on the screen and some quiet roadways there at 35 at New Braunfels and dry one at that. But we are keeping our eye out there. We will keep you updated on any other issues that could pop up. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio fire investigators are looking into a fire at a home on the city's west side that happened overnight. We know firefighters spent several hours keeping an eye out for hot spots. Jonathan Coto joins us live downtown. Jonathan, do fire crews have an idea of what could have caused this particular fire? Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Stephanie. That's a good question, but the cause of the fire, the exact cause of the fire still remains under investigation, although they do have a good idea of where that fire started. We can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this morning. Firefighters responding to the 700 block of South San Agustin. This is near South General McMullen, not too far from Highway 90 and Castroville Road. You can see there are firefighters responding to this home. They tell us the fire started in a shed outside Detroit attached from the main structure. The flames quickly catching on to the eaves and the overhangs of the main structure that you see there on your screen. But they were luckily able to arrive at the scene and quickly put the flames out. As we know, these homes on the city's west side tend to be pretty close to each other. So the quick response avoided the fire from spreading to neighboring homes. Back out live. Fire officials tell us there was about uh, at least $10,000 worth in damages. And again, the cause of the fire remains under investigation. And it's important to note this morning that the good news here is no injuries were reported. That house was vacant. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Right now, we want to get you some breaking news on the city's northwest side. There are reports of a crash. Katrina Weber is there now at Wurzbach in Cairo. Katrina, what do we know so far? Well, we can see that it is a crash involving a VIA bus. Police described this as a head-on collision. Now, there's a car that is facing the bus right in front of it. However, that we're not sure if that is the car that was involved in this crash because there's another one on the opposite side of the road here that is uh, very badly damaged. It's hard to see because of all the flashing lights, but there's another car here to the left side uh, that is very badly damaged. So it appears that may be the one that initially crashed uh, with the bus and we're not sure if this one in front of the bus uh, actually made contact. Police here have not been able to give me too much information. They've been concentrating on blocking off traffic. This crash does have Wurzbach Road blocked off in this area. This is out near Evers Road, so it's that section right there that is blocked off. The cross street is called Cairo. Uh, we do not know yet whether anyone, any passengers were on the bus or whether the driver or anyone in the cars may have been injured. Police were not able to give me that information. They say they did see an ambulance here earlier and that it did take off. So we're still trying to get all the details, but from what we know, again, it is a crash involving a VIA bus, what police described as a head-on crash involving a car and a bus. And again, for now, Wurzbach Road in this area near Evers is shut down. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. And in just under a week, students in Uvalde will be heading back to the classroom for the first time since their last school year ended in tragedy. For months, we've heard parents calling for safety and security changes. That work has started, but as Lee Waldman shows us, it will not be ready in time. It's a taste of what next week will hold. Math. You want to learn math? Is that one of your favorite subjects? Math, yeah. Parents and their students walking in and out of Uvalde Elementary for Meet the Teacher Night. A little more nervous than normal, but um, he's got a good teacher. Lucas Potter is going into third grade. He was at Rob on May 24th. His mom, Angela, says she'll have some fear sending him and his brother back next Tuesday. You don't think it can happen to you, and then all of a sudden it does. The campus is partially enclosed by eight foot tall, non scalable perimeter fencing. Right now, there's still a few holes that need to be filled. It's the same here at Dalton Elementary. But at Morales Junior High, no new fencing in sight. I went to Morales yesterday and they didn't have anything improved over there that I saw. This morning, we made him virtual. According to the district's website, fencing work is started on three of the eight campuses. Uvalde High School will be measured and a timeline made for when their fencing will be put up. I trust this fence. It's a school board I don't trust. Meanwhile, the work on the secured vestibules at each campus is running significantly behind, according to Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell. Only started at Uvalde Elementary, UDLA, and UHS. We'll have a DPS officer assigned at each entry point 
when school begins. The district bought 500 security cameras. They're fully installed at UHS and started at Morales. Nowhere else, though. Again, uh, work won't be com totally complete by Tuesday. However, we will continue this work until it is complete. With school around the corner, there's some optimism about the work that's been done. Hopefully he can feel a little more safer. And plenty of skepticism. If I have to pull him, I will. And right now, only thing I see here is a fence. UCISD shared that 136 students have enrolled in their virtual academy. The application process closes today. We're still waiting on transfer numbers from this school year, but looking at UCISD's transfer data from the Texas Education Agency's website for the 2021-2022 school year, there were 416 total transfers out of the district. Back to you. And that was Lee Waldman reporting. And again, Tuesday marks the first day of school for Uvalde CISD, and we want to hear your messages of hope for the community. Right now on KSET.com, you can share your thoughts for the new school year, and be sure to tune in on Tuesday morning. We're going to have team coverage live from Uvalde all morning on GMSA. We may share your responses during our newscast, so look for this story on our homepage. Now to a health alert. There are renewed concerns about the potent drug fentanyl. A amount as small as the tip of a pencil could be deadly. And now this, a rainbow fentanyl could be a disturbing trend on school campuses in the U.S. The drug looks like candy. People think they're getting Xanax or Adderall off the street and unknowingly taking fentanyl. Between Austin and New Braunfels, Hayes CISD suspects the drug led to three student deaths in just the past month. San Antonio area districts we spoke to say they haven't seen this at their schools, but they remain on alert. Pfizer and Moderna are hoping for emergency approval of their new booster shots this week. The CDC's advisory committee is set to discuss the shots tomorrow. The shots are formulated to protect against the new Omicron strains and the original strain. The FDA also has to give its approval. A vote on emergency approval could happen by the end of the week. Other stories we're following for you this morning. The legal team for former constable Michelle Barrientes Vela pushed for a mistrial six days into testimony. In this case, the ex-constable is accused of fabricating security payment logs for Rodriguez Park. Now, Texas Ranger investigating the case went beyond that scope during his testimony yesterday. At one point, he said he believed the ex-constable committed official oppression, something Barrientes Vela was not charged with in this trial. Now that's a comment Barrientes Vela's team reacted to yesterday. This is ridiculous. I mean, we were clear about this. We had hearings outside the jury's presence multiple times. She's asking a question about what offense is, and then he bites for it. They knew it. They knew they were going to do this. There's no other explanation. These are not stupid people. They knew exactly what was going on. You were more than fair and more than clear of your admonishments not to talk about anything outside the motion and limiting. Clear. Judge Felia Mesa denied the motion for a mistrial, but she ordered the ranger to attend a separate hearing to demonstrate why he was not in contempt of court. The prosecution is nearing the end of its case. Defense attorneys for Barrientes Vela have not indicated if they plan to call witnesses. And still ahead on GMSA, could you be over parenting your child? Well, we're going to explain. Today marks 25 years since the death of Princess Diana. She's being remembered by many as a woman who brought lasting change to Britain's royal family, helping bridge the gap between centuries of tradition and a multicultural nation in the Internet age. While the princess hated the intrusion, she quickly learned the media was also a tool she could use to change public perceptions and make a lasting change. Gone now 25 years. And welcome back. It is 644. Have you ever heard of the term overparenting? Well, it essentially means you are micromanaging your child's life. While moms and dads who overparent have good intentions, this suffocating style can negatively affect kids. David Sears tells us about some signs to watch out for. When it comes to parenting, everyone has their own style. I think we hover on overparenting. In a way, I'm a snowplow, but I expect her to clear her own obstacles. One thing you don't want to do is overparent. Research suggests this approach can stunt a child's development and cause them to become too dependent. 
But how do you know if you are overparenting your child? The first sign, you can get into frequent power struggles with your child. You demand that they follow your instructions instead of letting them make choices on their own. Another sign, you won't let your child fail. Jumping to your child's rescue when they struggle won't help them learn from their mistakes. Extreme responsiveness to your child's needs is another sign of overparenting. Try to make your child happy all the time, giving them too much praise. Examples of this. An excessive worry about your child is another sign to watch out for. And overindulging kids can also be a red flag. For instance, not assigning your kids chores or sparing them from responsibility can harm them in the long run. Researchers found overparenting techniques can lead to problems. Things like a lack of resilience, a sense of entitlement, high parental anxiety, and an inadequate development of life skills. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, David. Let's get a look here at the roadways. Transguide cameras showing the commute is shaping up to be pretty busy out there. 281 there at 410. You can see traffic already moving without any issues, though. There at 281 at St. Mary's. Uh, definitely seeing a lot more folks as the morning is getting going. Now, while you can see it on our map, some of the slowdowns are in the usual spots. A lot of those transguide cameras aren't going to pick up all the issues out there. In fact, there's one major issue that we are watching now over here off of Wurzbach Road, not far from Evers Road, a via bus crash, a pretty serious crash that has also shut down a portion of the road there and that's actually where we find Katrina Weber live there now. We talked to her a few moments ago. Katrina, what's the very latest? Well, we got a little bit of a different angle and we can see uh, that things are not quite as they seem from down the street. This is the bus involved here. It uh, looks like it has some very serious damage on that right side. Uh, also, the car that is right here doesn't seem to have a whole lot of damage. The one that was impacted is now being uh, loaded onto the tow truck. It has really heavy damage on the front end. The police described this as a head-on collision. This happened uh, after 5.30 this morning. Now, we still have not had any official details from them just yet, but again, a lot of people here milling about. They were sitting, some of them were sitting on the curb. I can see a man here limping. Uh, we haven't had a chance to talk to any of them yet to see if they were passengers on the, on the bus or perhaps in a car that was involved in this crash. Again, though, this does uh, impact Wurzbach Road in the area of Evers Road. Traffic being diverted around this crash scene right here. So if you're heading this way, you may have to find another way around or you may be sent off course a bit to get around this crashing, crash scene. Reporting live on the Northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And we have a new flash flood warning in effect for parts of Real County and parts of Bandera County. It's right here. This is an area that saw some very heavy rain last night. Now we're getting some more heavy rain this morning. So let's get the latest here with this flash flood warning. That's going to go until 945 this morning. And again, basically, it's just western Bandera here. It's a, it's a small area, but it's an area that we have to be uh, concerned with as this heavy rain uh, continues to fall. And what we'll do here is uh, we'll take this off and we'll look at some of the uh, the uh, rainfall that has uh, fallen here over the last, uh, well, 24 hours or so. And it's been pretty significant as far as uh, totals go. I think some places uh, we were estimating around seven inches in western parts of uh, Bandera County. So we'll query some of these areas. And that's showing about three inches over the last 24 hours. And what I'll do here is I'll actually switch radar sites. And that might uh, make a difference here as far as uh, rainfall and how much has uh, fallen. And again, it's that western part of Bandera County, eastern part of Real County where we have the most concern. And uh, that's showing about the same two to three inches. I think we've seen a little bit more than that. And it's raining on top of these uh, of this area that, that did get some heavy rain. So that's why that flush flood warning is in effect. And I think we're going to continue to see some more heavy rain through the morning. We'll switch it back to the radar and uh, you'll see where that heavy rain is right now between Utopia and Vanderpool. That's an area that we're going to have to watch with this rain still coming through and there's more developing and then back off to the uh, south and west some good rain from eagle pass up to brackettville this is mostly just moderate rain now and that's a good thing but there still could be some flooding issues and as far as san antonio is concerned well there's not a lot here right now and i don't expect a lot throughout the morning uh, but we could uh, we could see some more isolated showers and storms pop up a little bit later today there is one little shower there in northern atascosa county we'll keep an eye on that the morning commute is 
Stephen has been pointing out is uh, rather dry. So here's the setup. You see all the rain out to the west. There's a flash flood watch that's going to go through tomorrow morning and the upper level oh, that's behind this is moving west. So it's moving away from us, which is why rain chances are going to go down a little bit today and tomorrow. But a 30% chance of rain. This is noontime. Heavy rain out west starts to come to an end and then we'll see some of these pop up showers and storms. 30% chance through about six, seven o'clock this evening and then more chances tomorrow morning and even into tomorrow afternoon with these pop up downpours. Not everyone's going to get rain out of this, but uh, there will be some good rain in places where we do see those downpours uh, develop. 77 degrees and cloudy at the airport right now. East Julie winds at about six and we'll see temperatures generally in the 70s this morning. Then we'll make it into the 90s this afternoon. High temperatures will be in the low 90s. Uh, here in San Antonio. So 85 noontime, 20% chance of rain, then a 30% chance by 4 or 5 o'clock, 91. That high temperature will feel hotter than that, too, of course, with all this thick humidity. And more rain chances on the way. In fact, they come up some this weekend, Saturday, Sunday. More moisture in here. Another disturbance rolls through. Even Labor Day, there's some opportunities for some downpours. So here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 93 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. Friday, 30% chance, but we pop it up to a 40% chance by Saturday. Sunday, 50% chance, and that brings temperatures down some to upper 80s by Sunday and Monday. We like the temperatures down. It's, uh, it's a good looking forecast. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Justin. 651, 76 degrees. How you can help ensure the safety of those out here to keep drivers safe. I'm Katrina Weber. That story tomorrow on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam. No rain in this shop, but be prepared once again for those chances. Grab that umbrella. We'll be right back. Part of a major northwest side road shut down due to a head-on collision, collision involving a VIA bus. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. We're on Wurzbach Road, not far from Evers. The bus that crashed is just right here behind me. Quite a big mess here in the middle of the road. Uh, we did have a chance to talk to a passenger on the bus. He says there were three of them on there with the driver heading along Wurzbach when a car that appeared to be going around, weaving in and out of traffic, crossed over to their side of the road. The bus uh, took this route to try to avoid the collision, but that did not happen. Now, the car involved is now on the back of a tow truck. It has heavy front end damage. That passenger telling us that the driver of that car did go to the hospital by ambulance. Uh, he says that the motor flew out of the car during the crash. He says he suffered minor injuries. Uh, we don't know the status of the two other people, but they're standing here and they're able to talk to police. Uh, but for now, Wurzbach Road in the area of Evers Road has this closure until this accident scene is cleared up. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We'll look for some alternative routes as well. But let's get a look here for Tenant Morrison, our friends at TransGuy telling us of a serious crash here in the southbound lanes. And we're going to work to get more information. But right now, the commute is already getting pretty busy, Justin. Thank you, sir. We still have that flash flood warning that's in effect until 945 for western parts of Bandera, eastern parts of Real County. Heavy rain out west here in San Antonio. Just a few showers popping up, and we have about a 30% chance of rain throughout the day today. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Be careful out there, and we'll see you back here at 9.